the pandemic was first identified. But if public health officials feel it necessary to ask America to mask up again, how many would comply? The Drudge Report led its website this morning with the headline, Not Again, Mask Up in New York. Lead story at CBS News this morning, COVID hospitalizations on the rise as U.S. enters Labor Day weekend. The past several weeks have seen reports from all over the country of a rise in cases. And yes, the CDC reports COVID-19 hospital admissions are up more than 19 percent in the most recent week. In a few school districts, this has even led to canceled classes and sporting events. A handful of companies and schools have responded to outbreaks on their premises by reinstating mask mandates, among them several hospital systems, including, including Kaiser Permanente in Northern California, Morris Brown College in Atlanta, Dillard University in Louisiana, Lionsgate Film Studio in Santa Monica. But so far, so far, those have been the few exceptions. And this graph shows how the current rise in hospitalizations compares to past surges, less than half the numbers this time last year and still lower than they've been for about 80 percent of the pandemic. But if things get worse, it may be hard to get people to revert to an abundance of caution. According to Gallup, in the first two years, public confidence in the U.S. healthcare system has dropped from 44 percent to 34 percent. And Donald Trump took to Truth Social to again make the issue political, accusing the latest outbreak to be hype designed to impact the 2024 election. But to every COVID tyrant who wants to take away our freedom, hear these words, we will not comply. So don't even think about it. We will not shut down our schools. We will not accept your lockdowns. We will not abide by your mask mandates. And we will not tolerate your vaccine mandates. Joining me now to discuss is Dr. Anthony Fauci. He, of course, is the former director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dr. Fauci, nice to have you back. How worried are you that people will not follow advice to wear masks if, big if, if we get to that? Well, Michael, that's a very good question. As you said, if we get to that, I mean, we're starting to see a surge of cases, as you mentioned, about an 18 or 19 percent increase in hospitalizations, certainly going in the wrong direction, what looks like a late summer and into the fall surge. How bad it's going to get, we don't know. As you know, this is a very unpredictable virus has shown us that over the last three and a half years. I am concerned that people will not abide by recommendations. And, and we're not talking about mandates or forcing anybody, but when you have a situation where the volume of cases in society gets to a reasonably high level, particularly the vulnerable, those who are elderly and those with underlying conditions, are going to be more susceptible and vulnerable if they do get infected to get severe disease leading to hospitalization. We know that. That's a fact. We've seen that. So I would hope that if, in fact, we get to the point where the volume of cases is such and organizations like the CDC recommend, CDC doesn't mandate anything, I mean, recommends that people wear masks, I would hope that they abide by the recommendation and take into account the risk to themselves and to their families. And again, we're not talking There's about forcing anybody to do anything. Totally understood. There is a perception out there by many, how many, I don't know, that they don't work and that the data concludes that they didn't work in the first go round. Respond to that on masks. Yeah, well, that's not so. I mean, when you're talking about at the population level, that the data are less strong than knowing that if you look on a situation as an individual protecting themselves or protecting them from spreading it, there's no doubt that masks work. Different studies give different percentages of advantage of wearing it. But there's no doubt that the weight of the studies, and there have been many studies, indicate the benefit of wearing masks. I'm going to refer to one of them. You've heard about it before. I heard about it from a number of radio callers. Uh, Brett Stevens in The Times talked about Cochrane. Put that on the screen. The most rigorous and comprehensive analysis of scientific studies conducted on the efficacy of masks for reducing the spread of respiratory illness, including COVID-19, was published last month. Its conclusions, said Tom Jefferson, the Oxford epidemiologist who is the lead author, were unambiguous. There is just no evidence that they, masks, make any difference, he told the journalist Mayan Damasi, full stop. 
But wait, hold on. What about the N95 masks as opposed to the lower quality? Surgical or cloth masks makes no difference. None of it, he said. Well, what about the studies that initially persuaded policymakers to impose mask mandates? They were convinced by non-randomized studies, flawed observational studies. How do we get beyond that finding of that particular review? Yeah, but there are other studies, Michael, that show at an individual level for individual. When you're talking about the effect on the epidemic or the pandemic as a whole, the data are less strong. But when you talk about as an individual basis of someone protecting themselves or protecting themselves from spreading it to others, there's no doubt that there are many studies that show that there is an advantage. When you took at the broad population level, like the Cochrane study, the data are less firm with regard to the effect on the overall pandemic. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about an individual's effect on their own safety. That's a bit different than the broad population level. Dr. Fauci, look back and, and reflect and tell me, how would you do it differently with regard to kids? I am of the opinion that we erred on the side, this is probably inartfully said, of physical health not emotional health, and, and, and that putting our, our kids within parameters in the pandemic was not in their best interest. Do you share that perception, and if not, why? So, Michael, are you referring to the closing of schools and the negative impact yes. that has on development yes. and mental health? Yeah, I am. Well, certainly, yeah. when you were, yeah, when we were dealing, Michael, with the tsunami that we saw earlier on in the pandemic, when things had to be shut down because we were having hospitals that were overcrowded and we were having freezer trucks in front of hospitals in New York and other cities because we had no place to put the bodies, that was a very, very dramatic situation that needed something immediately to stop it. The question is, how long should a shutdown have been? And I think that there's varying degrees of differences in that, and I agree that I, if you look back at the things that I've said back then, we should try as best as possible to keep the schools open and the schools that are closed to get them open safely by any of a number of means, including increasing the ventilation in schools, making sure that the people around the children are properly vaccinated. So I agree. I mean, there was a point where we had to shut down, but the duration of the shutdown is something that is questionable. And I think people rather appropriately should be examining of whether or not things should have been shut down for so long. But the initial shutting down was something that really had to have been done, Michael, because we were in desperate situations then. Given the public sentiment that I shared at the outset, people saying there's no way I'd mask up again, a final thought from Dr. Fauci. If it comes to it, we hope it doesn't, but if it comes to it, might a better approach say, let's protect the most vulnerable and allow others to lead their normal lives? Final word is yours. Well, yeah, I mean, mandating I don't think is going to happen. There may be local mandates, Michael, and people keep thinking that the federal government is going to mandate that you wear a mask. That's not going to happen, but there may be individual institutions, organizations that are going to say, if you want to come to work, you've got to wear a mask. There's nothing that the federal government can do about that if people want to do it locally. I think people need to realize it is extremely unlikely that you're going to see a mandate, for example, from the CDC, which has no authority to mandate anything with regard to masks. They can only recommend it. So people essentially, for the most part, can do what they want to do based on their own evaluation of their own risk. Dr. Fauci, nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Good to be with you. Thank you, Michael.